Welcome back. Thursday morning here on BT Vancouver. And Wayne Dykow, my father, was absolutely crestfallen when he got the news that the PE would be postponed this year because, well, he likes a good Beach Boys concert. Let's bring in Laura Balance right now, spokesperson for the PE. Uh, Laura, thanks for coming on. How are you doing, by the way? Well, you know, like everybody, it's been it's been a sad turn of events. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me in particular, you know, the PE is so near and dear to my heart, like so many British Columbians, uh, that it's 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 been unfortunate. But we're trying to keep the spirit alive for sure and support some of our our amazing longtime concessionaires, which is what this weekend's all about. Yeah. So you're trying to keep some of the traditions alive when it comes to the fair of the PE. Tell us about the mini donut drive through happening uh, tomorrow all through the weekend. Yeah, such a fun initiative. What we found, uh, we were so overwhelmed with the outpouring of support from every corner of this province when it was announced that the traditional fair would not happen. And what we wanted to do is give British Columbia, give Vancouver a taste of the p and &E. And so we've started the what we hope is the first in a series of drive-through experiences where you can get a little bit of the, a taste of the fair. We've started with the monster of all fair food, which is the <laughs> mini donut. And uh, we're really, really excited about this. So uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend, from one till seven, you can pre-purchase a ticket online um, or you can purchase also on site but if you pre-purchase you also get two tickets to next year's opening day of the fair and we really um, are hoping people will come out and support these longtime vendors it's the vendors you know from the PE, those little donuts tin lizzy donuts sin city donuts and we also have our own food stand called p e fun dunkers which also is the mini donut stand and so these purchases will will allow these vendors to receive a little bit of revenue at a time when pretty much the entire fair circuit has been shut down across the country, all events. So it may represent the only or a very uh, significant portion of the year's income for these uh, concessionaires who are really struggling. And there's a great video on the PE Facebook page right now that looks at the legacy of the fair. Uh, talk to us about the uh, the length of that legacy and how important it is to the people of British Columbia. Yeah, so August 22nd, we should have been opening our fair for the 110th year. And I think what people don't realize, we all have our our memories of the PE. If you grew up in British Columbia, I think everybody has a memory, whether it's attending the fair, whether it's working at the fair, their family experiences. It is the place where you came with your grandparents. Today, you're coming with your grandchildren. And it is that collective memory. And it's so special. And uh, what people may not realize is we are also the largest employer of youth in this province. We are a first job experience for so many generations of British Columbians. And so we play a, a, a strong economic role. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the PE and Fair itself generates in excess of $80 million annually into the local economy. And the PE Corporation across all of our business streams represents in excess of $200 million into the local economy. So an important contributor. And we really think part of that um, province-wide memory for for british columbia all right we have to leave it there for time laura but when things get back to normal can you work on getting foreigner back because last time i saw them at the PE, they rocked yeah we're we're on it we had a great year this year and we look forward to having you guys back in 2021 all right you take care good luck laura that's laura balance p and e spokesperson and we'll be back with more bt after this